Hi, I'm Lola Lorber, a patient care advocate with Progeny. Before we dive in today, we just want to remind you to subscribe to our channel. We're posting videos featuring fertility experts weekly, and by subscribing and liking these videos, you'll be helping others to find them. We recently published a video about an IVF protocol, often called mini-IVF, which can mean a few different things, but generally is a less aggressive IVF protocol. In that video, we spoke about how mini-IVF might be an appropriate option for those with a diagnosis of diminished ovarian reserve. This might be a bit counterintuitive because when there are fewer eggs, it seems like one should try to ramp up the medications to mature as many as possible. But as Dr. Kumar explained previously, that method tends not to work as well as just trying to get a few eggs per cycle with mini IVF. Well, patients with PCOS have sort of an opposite situation going on. Those with PCOS typically mature several eggs when doing IVF. This makes it sound like those with PCOS might only need a little help when doing IVF. So we asked Dr. Kumar if these patients might also be a good candidate for mini IVF. For polycystic ovary syndrome, mini IVF, uh, it depends on the definition we use. So if we're using just oral medications such as Clomid, Femira, et cetera, then mini IVF may not be appropriate for women with polycystic ovary syndrome. If we go back to the data with clomiphene citrate, if we use a dosage of 50 milligrams in someone with PCOS, only 50% of those women will ovulate. That means release any egg. If we go up to 100 milligrams, we're looking at about 75% of women uh, ovulating. Going all the way up to 250 milligrams, we max out at about 80% of women ovulating. So that sweet spot seems to be at a 100 milligram dose. Uh, at least for superovulation with, or ovulation induction with intrauterine insemination, therefore avoiding um, the adverse effects of high dose Clomid on the lining of the uterus. Obviously, that doesn't apply to uh, the setting of IVF, so I routinely use up to 200 milligrams of Clomid, but we're still going to have those 20% of women with PCOS being unresponsive. And I think those are the recalcitrant um, kind of individuals that I encounter most in uh, the PCOS setting. And so therefore in that scenario, the mini IVF would not work at all. On the other hand, if we're defining mini IVF as minimal stimulation using injectable medications, then I think it would be entirely appropriate with someone with PCOS to limit the uh, risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. As we've said previously, IVF in all fertility medicine is highly personalized. We built this YouTube channel to help educate around these topics. The more educated you are, the more you will truly understand your options. But you cannot get an IVF protocol recommendation from the internet. And while mini IVF might be right for some, it might not be appropriate for others.